So talk about uh, calibration uh, in sewer gems. Um, the calibration itself, it's very important. It's the, let's say, the final step of the hydraulic modeling. So for this, uh, you need to enter data from real system to start your calibration. There is a, a name, Jigo, that is very famous uh, in software, uh, in software instructions or for any kind of uh, numerical application. It's the garbage in, garbage out. That means, especially in calibration, if you calibrate, for example, uh, uh, hydraulic model made for a wet weather scenario using a dry weather data, it will not work well. So we need to have good information for the for the calibration procedure. So regarding uh, the types of data. Um, Continuous data can be used to generate full hydrographs to help separate inf infiltration and flow from the dry water flow. Um, point and peak flow measurement can be used to fill uh, in data ga gaps. Uh, flows observed at plants and pump stations are a composite of base wastewater flow and groundwater infiltration during dry weather. They also include the RDII we saw yesterday following storm or snow, snow melting vents. Uh, water meters can be used to, to estimate uh, wastewater flows, taking into account storage uh, water in product and irrigation. Uh, a common use of time flow is approximating the flow into a wet well. In sewer studies, the manual velocity area method is most frequently used for an in situ calibration of installed depth error velocity meters. In this process, the velocity is measured using a point velocity meter, such as an electromagnetic or a propeller meter. While not specifically a method of determining the rate of flow, insight into the level of surcharge can be gained using a chalking technique. In this method, a vertical line is drawn up the side of the manhole with chalk. The manhole is the inspected post-storm to determine the depth of flow that occurred by observing where the chalk has been washed away. Similar to the chalking approach, a series of cups can be attached to the manhole wall or central pole hung the manhole cover frame. Post-event, the manhole is inspected and the level determined by the highest cup to be filled. This means that for a measured depth at a given location relative to the control, a flow rate uh, Q can be calculated provided by conditions on the downstream side are met. Ultrasonic transducer, bubbler, or ruler are secondary devices. Wires can trap solids behind them, which reduces their accuracy as flow meters and causes maintenance problems. As an example of a very low flow rates include nighttime flow isolation. Flumes overcome the siltation and head loss problems found in wares. While partial flumes are the most common commonly used configuration. Several other configurations are also used, include, including the Palmer bolus flumes, H flumes, Leopoldo flumes, and trapezoid flumes. 
it with its own advantage and disadvantages. The power bombs flames are especially useful for in serious flow for monitoring in that they can be constructed in existing circular pipes. In the case of full pipe flow, only the average velocity need be measured as the cross-sectional area remains constant for a given pipe. In some cases, individuals attempt to measure depth of flow in a pipe and then attempt to determine flow from an equation such as the Manning formula. Such an approach will only yield accurate results when uniform flow exists in the pipe. In Manning's equation, the depth is always an increasing function of velocity. Backwater conditions occur frequently in sanitary sewer systems. In this situation, as the depth increases, the average velocity may actually decrease. As the system becomes surcharged, using the depth and Manning's equation to calculate velocity and flow becomes invalid. In this situation, the use of depth only measurements yields a value of velocity and flow rate that are too high. Theoretically, devices are said to measure the flow with an accuracy of 1 to 2 percent. It's easy to waste time trying to make a model fit flow data to less than 10 percent if the flows are only accurate to that level. Measurement errors can occur in both no recording and recording gauges. These errors in almost all cases tend to underestimate the actual amount of rain that fell. Errors fall into four categories. Observer error, rain gauge location, rain gauge density, and wind effects. In 1980, the National Weather Service's next generation weather radar, the next head program was established. There were 158 operational NAS head radar systems called the WSR88T, deployed throughout the United States and at selected overseas location. Vendors have developed systems which process and calibrate NAS head data to produce high resolution, short resolution estimates of rainfall. Uh, these images are providing a returned sign of strength and generally the, hi the higher the return sign, the more intense the rifle. The properly calibrated return sign is trying to actual rainfall. Rain gauges are required to in the study area. These are low individual yetographs to be developed for each cell in the study area. This may represent a significant save savings as the cells may provide information for what you would, would have required hundreds of rain gauges. Wet weather is typically more difficult to calibrate due to uncertainty in the location and the nature of the effects and the spatial and temporal variations in precipitations. The key to the key to calibration is to determine why the model and field measurement differ they make and make the necessary adjustment. Sometimes field data are incorrect. Make sure sensors are calibrated as well. What do you adjust to achieve calibration? Here are some general steps. For dry calibration, adjust wastewater loads to monitoring data. For wet well events, adjust their DII for sanitary and the hydrology for combined sewers. Predicted flows are sensitive to loads, insensitive to pipe friction minor loss coefficients. Predictable hydraulic grade lines are sensitive to flow hydraulic properties blockages. When a monitored reach of graft sewer is fed from a pump station, the model will usually predict the correct flow rates if the pump curves are correct. 
but may have troubles matching the on-off levels. This is usually caused by errors in the pump on-off settings or the, or the geometry of the pump station wet well. Always confirm that meters are working correctly. Review the basin boundaries for potential points where the customers and pipe may actually belong, belong in a different basin because of errors in the piping. Sometimes your model predicts the correct overall total flow volume, but the shape of the hydrograph is way off. If the goal of the project is to determine the peak flow rate in the pipes, then when that rate occurs may be irrelevant. If, on the other hand, there are considerations for storage and pump stations, then the timing of the curve becomes more important. Now checking some overflow situations. Uh, engineered of overflows are usually metered and are usually only found on combined sewer systems. Calibrating for surcharge depth is very important, especially when there are overflows. A slow per diameter can be the cause of pipes with limited capacity. Combined, combined sewer modeling is different from the sanitary sewer modeling. In combined sewers, carry as to water and storm water. Overflows is permitted in wet, water, in wet weather, and no dry weather overflows. Here, a plan and profile schematic of a typical combined sewer overflow. We can see that we have a control structure located at the right, uh, right picture, and this element can be used to block the, the the amount of load and then how this flow go directly to treatment and what the amount of volume that pass over the blockage it goes to the overflow outfall. In general uh, the magnitude of the error uh, is a clear indication that the overflow is occurring. Once the geometry of the overflow is known, then realistic estimation of its wet weather performance can be made and included in sewer gems or sewer CAD. Again, if there are still losses that exceeded the size of the documented structure, look very closely for additional overflows locations. And overflows should not occur in sanitary sewers. So it's difficult to document because it's not uh, frequent, may be caused by excessive infiltration in flow uh, and problems with undersized pipe or an obstruction that causes a bottleneck in the system. Check meter to confirm it was working correctly during wet weather events. The combination of wastewater infiltration in flow and rainwater from elastic connection sometimes exceeds the capacity of segments of the sanitary sewer collection system. This results in surcharges or overflows from manholes located upstream of the pipe segments whose capacity are exceeded. The total flow also often exceeds the capacities of wastewater treatment plants resulting in bypasses of untreated wastewater into receiving waters. Model are a useful tool in determining the cause of overflows and the likelihood of success of correction measures. Capacity analysis is the primary goal of hydraulic model. Use the, mod the model to find the places where you have problems in the system. Use the model to determine the capacity or causes of overflows. 
locations where capacity adequate in a module but overflows occur are often due to blockages. Here is some examples of obstruction in sewers. The camera which is pulled or crowns for sewers continually records tape for later review or before and after comparison. The person monitoring the television progress can verbally record a running commentary on the tape. The inspection should be carried out sufficiently slowly to enable all features to be observed. CCTV is useful for finding roots, collapsed pipes, sags, illegal taps, imen and cracks, but not for finding sediment, since the pipe is usually cleaned before expansion, or illegal connections on customer property. This figure display the philosophy behind the implementation of these strategies for controlling infiltration and inflow and uh, sewer uh, overflows. However, there are situations where it might be easier to use wet weather treatment than reduce infiltration and inflow or augment capacity. If you augment capacity in the collection system, you need to treat everything that gets to the end of the pipe. Here are some photos of infiltration in the sewer. This is the example I was talking to you before this lecture. This kind of uh, infiltration or inflow, this is more an inflow than an infiltration. It can make, uh, let's say, a huge difference between your simulated pollutant to the real road. <clears throat> Sewer system control refers to the suite of alternatives available to, transfor to, to transport, treat, and or store the wastewater flow in order to protect the treatment plant and prevent overflows. Inline storage uses the existing volume of primar primary combined or sanitary system trucks and interceptors that is available during storm events to temporarily store flow generated by a wet weather event. Sewers with a relatively flat slope actually perform some of these functions automatically. Offline storage is physically separate from the sewer system and generally consisting of tanks, tunnels, pounds, and etc that are located adjacent to the sewerage system that comes filling once the water level has reached a trigger level in the system. Initially, storage analysis consists in simply adding an outfall pipe to your model at the selected location, with the elevation of the pipe set at the critical elevation above which the storage be activated. This will provide the initial estimate of the volume for which the tank should be sized. Once the storage volume has been determined, the hydraulic model can then be used to simulate the filling, storage and empty cycles for the design wet weather events. Local experience involves assigned flow rates to the facts observed in CCTV or smoke testing activities. Predictions are made by calculating the remaining filtration flow, assuming elim elimination of our portion of these effects. This methodology depends on a database of experience. The quantity of infiltration inflow assigned by engineering calculation for re rehabilitation of a manhole can be a number of gallons per minute. Removal of attribute to manhole rehabilitation is then the product of the assigned rate in gallons per minute and the number of manholes to be rehabilitated. 
The weaknesses of this method are optimistic calculations of the rate assigned to each component and the assumption that each item is a perfect infiltration and inflow contributor. An hydraulic, an hydraulic simulation model can be constructed including parameters intended to estimate infiltration and or inflow. Reduction of these parameters in the model is used to estimate the results of rehabilitation. The weakness of this method is that the models are imperfect and may include fast response inputs to the system that are not actually from the directly connected sources. Sometimes a pilot error study is a good start. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.